So number nine then from the 2018 Higher Maths paper two, six mark question, optimization. Except it's only a one part optimization. Normally there's a part A and a part B. And in part A, it would describe the situation. A sector with a particular fixed area has radius X centimeters. And then it would be hence show that the perimeter is given by this. Whereas here it just starts with the perimeter P of this sector is given by this. Then the second part, which is the only part here, would be, so what's the minimum value of P for these six marks? Now, I don't know why they didn't put in both parts this time. Well, maybe I do know why, because there's so many don't do part A, either because they're scared of it for some reason, or because they're told not to do it, and just leave it, and maybe go back and have a look at it at the end. And that's what I'll do here, I'll have a look at it at the end, because it's quite easy to deconstruct that back into the original question. And then you can see how easy it would have been to arrive at this. But anyway, starting with this one, what's the minimum value? Well, you've got this equation here. To find the minimum value, you're looking for stationary values. You want to differentiate it. Well, the first thing would be put it into a form suitable for differentiation, which means you don't want any x's in the denominator. So that needs to get brought up as power negative one. That creates other problems as well. Straight away, you should see you can't divide by zero. X can't be zero in this, in any of the calculations. The other thing is, it's not a coordinates question where X can be positive and negative. X is the radius of a circle. So you should really add, that means that X has to be greater than zero. There's only one part to the, the graph of that, if you like. Well, putting it into that suitable form gives you a mark. And then differentiating it, dp by dx, p dashed, it'll put p dashed. Whoops. That's always a better form because then if I want to evaluate p dashed, that'll show the value of x that you're putting in. Well, that will go down to just 2, multiply by the power, so minus 128, take 1 off the power, drops to negative 2. Now, that would be the second mark, except you're going to be using it. So you may well get the mark there, but you should really put it back into the form of over x squared. Put it back the way you found it. Then, how do we find a stationary point? How do we find an optimum value? You're looking for stationary points. I shouldn't say stationary points, so I'm really just talking about values. Stationary values but you can write whatever you like. That means that p dashed x, don't even need to make a statement, that should equal zero. So two minus one, two, eight over x squared should equal zero. Stating that, usually you state that and that, you don't need to make this statement really, but stating that in its own apparently is sufficient. Now you've got to solve this equation. Now notice x can't be zero, so you can just multiply everything by. So an equation with fractions, to get rid of fractions, you multiply them by the denominator. So multiply them by x squared. x squared times this term, 2x squared. x squared times that term, well, that was the whole point to get that rid of that x squared. Solving that, well, you could take out a factor of 2, then you'd have the difference of two squares, then you could factorise it. But there's only one mention of x, and there's only one mark for this answer. So you could just solve for that by getting rid of the bits and pieces. Take over the 128, divide by 2, do the square root. 2x squared is 128. x squared is 64. And then watch out for this bit. x is the square root, which is only 8, as x is greater than 0. Don't pick out a negative 8 and put a negative 8 into it then you won't get the last couple of marks. Now, even though it said find the minimum value, you still have to justify it's a minimum, which means you need a table of signs. Now, a table of signs can be a bit of dangerous territory here, because this function is broken at x equals zero. If you were to draw the graph of this for all values of x, it would look like this. You should know that when you divide by zero, it shoots off to infinity. So on this side, it would look like this. As you get closer to zero, it shoots up. It would end up looking like this. And obviously, that's the value you're looking for. 
On the other side, it would look like this. It's broken there. And whenever you've got broken graphs, they're called discontinuous graphs, you can't make your table of signs up. If you have decided here to put plus or minus 8 with a minus 8 and an 8 and treat it as if they're continuous in between, if you do that, you won't get this mark for the table of signs. But you shouldn't be doing that anyway because x has to be positive and the positive portion is continuous. So for the table of signs, you know something happens at 8, and then you get two choices. You can either pick numbers either side of 8, you put them in, or maybe you would write 8 plus and 8 minus, and then just pick numbers either side of 8, which is not what 8 plus and 8 minus means. I'll just pick numbers either side of 8. So. 10, for instance, oh, well, I know, if you're using your calculator, just go for 9 and 7. So that's the value of x. You're going to work out p dashed of x. Not its actual value, just its sign, so you can get the shape of it. You don't need to write in shape. Usually just leave that part. But you can put shape in if you want to feel safe. Now, you know the answer there should be 0. You have to put this bit in. You should really put in both, but you have to put in this bit to show what these numbers stand for. Now, if you're picking numbers... Put them into a calculator. When you work that out, and you don't need to show this answer, it comes to a negative. Be sure to just double check your calculation. And when you work this one out, it comes to a positive, which means it goes like this, which means you've got a minimum at x equals 8. That's worth a mark. Now back to this table again, just want to mention this one more time. This is a discontinuous graph. Don't, I've already said that, put a negative 8 and an 8 and do this and then pick any number in between, like a negative 7 or a 1 or a 5 or whatever, because that wouldn't work. If you've got a broken graph, if it's not continuous, you have to treat it in two separate parts. If that's a discontinuous graph, you'll have to split it. And the 8 belongs to one complete portion, and the negative 8 would belong to the other complete portion. And you'd have to choose something before and after 8, something before and after negative 8. Remembering that it's discontinuous at 0. Now, the safest way to do that, if it was a complete coordinate question, is if you know there's something dangerous about the graph, stay close to home. That's why you write that business of 8 plus and 8 minus. Because what that really means isn't some number bigger than 8 or some number less than 8. It means some number ever so slightly greater than 8, ever so slightly less than 8. You're staying as close to home as possible. You're staying in what's called the neighbourhood. And the way you would use a neighbourhood here would be this. If instead of that you wrote the neighbourhood variety down of 8 plus and 8 minus, sometimes a minus is shown in front of the 8, just because it's on the other side. You may well show that, but then not use that, just use something like a 10 and a 5, which is not what it means. What that means is that you're going to not carry out the calculation, but investigate the calculation. What would happen if you were slightly more than 8? For instance, to get these signs here using neighbourhoods, you would say this, and you wouldn't be using a calculator. If it is 8, then since it comes to 0, you know that that part must balance the 2. So that if you make x slightly bigger than 8, the denominator will be bigger than it should be. So the answer to division will be smaller than it should have been, which means you'll end up with an answer which is slightly less than 2. So when you subtract it, you get a positive. Similarly, if at 8... That's the correct amount for the denominator to make this equal to. Then if you choose a number slightly less than 8, you've got a smaller denominator. It goes in more times. You've got a slightly bigger number. And if you take a number slightly bigger than 2 away from it, it'll be negative. Anyway, you can avoid that problem if you use the second derivative. If you worked out p double dashed of x... In other words, the rate of change of the gradients of the graph, which you can get from this. Multiply by the power, because 2 would just disappear. 
That would give you a 2 times it, so that's a 2, 5, 6. Take 1 off the power, it drops to negative 3, so that's over x cubed. That saves you all that anguish about, are you safe? Is it a nice safe graph, or is it a broken graph and I have to stay close to home? And then you work out the value of that at 8. So you've got 2, 5, 6 divided by 8 cubed. You don't actually need to work that out, because that's a positive number, and that's a positive number, and all you're interested in are signs, and that number's greater than zero. And if the rate of change of the gradients is greater than zero, that means the gradients are becoming more positive. So the gradients are going like this, which means you've got a minimum. That's an alternative for that mark. Anyway, that was a big diversion. What's the minimum value of P? P minimum. That'll be 2 times 8, remember use that, not this, plus 1, 2, 8 over another 8. So that's 16 plus 1, 16. So that's 32, and it was in centimetres. And there's the last mark. So what could part A have been? if they'd asked you, and I don't see why they didn't, because it is quite straightforward. Well, it would have been this. You've got a sector of a circle of radius x. Its area is 64 centimetres squared. Show that the perimeter of that sector is given by this expression. And then you would just say this, because you've got fractions of a circle. So the length of that arc, if we just call that A, the length of that arc will be a certain fraction of the circumference. And the circumference would be 2 pi times x. Or if you wanted to use the pi d form of it, pi times 2x. What fraction have you got? Well, that slice has got an area of 64. The complete area is pi r squared. So that's pi x squared in this case. Cancelling that down, the pi's go, one of the x's go, so you're left with a 1, 2, 8 on top and an x underneath. So what's the perimeter given by? It's given by the three parts that go all the way around the shape. An x, an x and an arc. It's going to be two lots of x plus the arc, which is 2x plus 1, 2, 8 over x. Now that should have been fairly straightforward because it's just like something out of a National 5 exam.